Hello, this is Mr. Barr from Dunlap Elementary and Seattle Public Schools. Welcome to our third lesson of the week on narrative fiction and story elements. Before we start, I just want to say that all of your teachers miss you and miss being in class with you so much. And I want to make sure I give a special shout out to someone really important to us at Dunlap from St. Louis, Missouri and Marquette University, our principal, Miss Todd. Miss Todd is the absolute best. All the students and staff at Dunlap miss her all the time. And I know she misses us as well because she tells us every day. Today, we're gonna introduce a new story element and examine it really closely. We're also going to make some connections between the book we've read this week and the one we read the week before. And the last thing we're gonna do is a writing activity and then your IDR. Let's get started and look at those story elements. So far, we've discussed characters, the people in the story, setting, where and when the story takes place, plot, what happens to the characters in the story, and conflict, the problem the characters need to solve. Today, we're gonna to add point of view. Who is telling the story? Why does a story's point of view matter? Hmm. To better understand this, let's look at a famous story that most of us know. The story of the three little pigs is traditionally told with three adorable, hardworking pigs that just want to make houses and a terrible, evil, big bad wolf that only wants to eat the pigs. What would happen though if you change the point of view of this story? That's exactly what John Sheska did when he wrote the true story of the three little pigs. When you imagine this story told by the wolf, all of a sudden, the wolf is innocent and all he wanted to do was help his grandmother. When he ate those little pigs, it was just a misunderstanding. We can say that by changing a story's point of view, the story itself can be 100% different, and that's why it's so important. How do we know who is telling the story? We're going to look at two examples from the books that we've read these past few weeks. The first example is from the story Akia. Remember, this is the book about the sled dog that's trying to win the Iditarod race in Alaska. I'm going to read one page from this book, and the entire time I want you to be thinking about who is telling this story. Day 3. Akiak and Squinty, Big Boy and Flinty, Roscoe and the rest of the team pounded across the snow for three days. The dogs were ready to break out, but Mick held them back. There was a right time, but not yet. High in the Alaskan range, they caught up to Willie Ketchum in third place. It was his team that had beaten them by just one minute last year. Following the rules, Willie pulled over and allowed Mick's team to pass. That old dog will never make it, he laughed at Akiak across the biting wind. She'll be waiting for you at Nome, Mick vowed. I want you to turn to a partner. And remember, a partner can be a friend or family member right next to you. It can be a pet or a stuffed animal, and it can also be just a person you're calling up on your imaginary phone. But turn to your partner, and I want you to tell them, who do you think is telling this story? Let's look for clues in the text to see if we can find out who is telling this story. Well, the book is called Akiak. Maybe it would make sense that the story is being told from Akiak's point of view. Hmm. But then, why would it say at the beginning, Akiak and all those other dogs pounded across the snow? 
if Akiak was really telling the story, he wouldn't refer to himself as Akiak. Well, maybe Mick could be telling the story. That would make sense. He's the one in charge of the whole sled dog team. Hmm, but then at the bottom, we notice it says Mick's team to pass and Mick vowed. If Mick was really telling the story, it seems like it would say, I did these different things. So I don't think he's telling the story either. We can also look at some of the pronouns. It says they caught up with Willie Ketchum's team. It was his team. And this makes me think that maybe the person telling the story isn't any of these characters. This means that Akiak is told in what we call the third person point of view. The third person point of view means that the story is being told by someone who is not a character in the story. Now let's look at our second example. This week we read Not My Girl. I'm going to read one page from that book and I want you to think the entire time about who is telling this story. I turned to my sisters and brother. They just stared. I tensed to run, but my father caught me in a tight embrace. Ulaman, he whispered. I had not heard my Inuit name in so long, I thought it might shatter like an e eggshell with the weight of my father's voice. At the school, I was known only by my Christian name, Margaret. I buried my head in my father's smoky parka, turning it wet with tears. I felt a touch much gentler than my father's strong grasp as my mother's arms joined his. Together they sheltered me in that safe place between them. Go ahead and turn to your partner again and tell them who was telling this story. Let's look at the text and see if we can find clues that help us understand who is telling this story. The first thing that should jump out is the use of pronouns like I, me, and my. I turn to my sisters and brother. I tends to run, but my father caught me in a tight embrace. I had not heard my Inuit name in so long, I thought it might shatter like an eggshell. It becomes very clear, especially with this line, at school, I was known only by my Christian name, Margaret. It's very clear through the author's use of words like I, me, and my, that Margaret or Ulaman is the one telling this story. This means that Not My Girl is told in the first person point of view because the person telling the story, Margaret, is also a character in the story. How does an author choose between first person and third person point of view? Is one of them considered better than the other? Neither one is considered better, it just depends on the type of story the author is writing. For example, with Not My Girl, first person point of view was a great choice because the author really wanted to show lots of thoughts and feelings that only Margaret could tell us about. In contrast, third person point of view made sense for the story of Akiak, because if you're telling a story in third person, you're, you can say what's going on in multiple places all at the same time, like Mick being in one part of the course when Akiak was in another. Now we're going to work on making connections. You've probably worked on making connections before in school, and there are lots of different types of connections you can make. 
Sometimes you make text to self connections where you relate something in your life to the book that you're reading. You also might make text to world connections where something you know about the world is happening in a book you're reading in class. Today, we're going to make text to text connections. A text to text connection is when you connect the characters, setting, or events from one story to another. You might use sentences like this. The character in this story is like the character in, or the setting in this story is the same as the setting in, or this event is like when, or these two stories are alike. I want you to turn to your partner for the last time, and I want you to try and make some text-to-text -text connections between Not My Girl and Akiak. If you haven't read Akiak, then go ahead and make a text-to-text -text connection with Not My Girl and just any other book you've read at school, or maybe at home, or with IDR, or anything else. You might have said that the characters in Akiak are like the characters in Not My Girl because both stories have characters that are sled dogs. You also might have said that the setting in Akiak is the same as the setting in Not My Girl because both settings are in or near the Arctic region where it's very, very cold and snowy. Now it's time for our writing activity. Today we're going to work on comparing and contrasting the book we read last week, Akiak, with the book we read this week, Not My Girl. In this activity, comparing is going to be when you find two things that are similar about the two texts. And contrasting is going to be when you find things that are different. Here's your assignment. Your assignment is to compare and contrast the stories of Akiak and Not My Girl. It's important to include at least one way the stories are the same and one way that they are different. A great strategy is to focus on the elements of fiction we've discussed. Setting, plot, characters, point of view, and conflict. Remember to indent, use the best grammar and spelling you can, and make sure you reread what you wrote to make sure your writing makes sense. If you're watching this video online, you can pause it now and do your writing activity. But if you can't pause it, you can just wait till the video is over and do your writing activity later. Now it's time for your independent daily reading. Make sure you find a fiction book you really want to read in a quiet place in your house. While you're reading today, I want you to think the entire time about point of view. Who is telling the story that you're reading? And how do you know that it's either first person or third person or some other point of view? The book I'll be reading is called The Midnight War of Mateo Martinez by Robin Yardy. This story is about a boy who's going through a strange time in his life. He's having problems with getting in trouble and with his friends. And then all of a sudden, some skunks steal his tricycle. He has to start going out in the middle of the night to protect his neighborhood and find out what's really going on. All right, time to get reading. We'll see you next time. If you're running out of books at home, here's a way you can get some using the Seattle Public Schools website.